What's up guys, it's Chris Majestic and it's that time of year again where I go out and buy the top of the line wireless routers from all the most popular Wi-Fi brands and put them up against each other. So I've spent the past week or so running hundreds of Wi-Fi tests to see which one is the best. So with this lineup, I was focused more on flagship or high-end Wi-Fi 7 routers. So the routers I have with me today are the Asus ROG Rapture GT BE98 Pro, TP-Link Archer BE900, Netgear Nighthawk RS700S, the Eero Max 7, and the Linksys Velop Pro 7. So considering we're testing Wi-Fi 7 routers, I used two Wi-Fi 7 client devices, which are the OnePlus 11 5G and the Asus BE92BT, which I installed in a desktop computer and actually lugged around my entire house, which is a nice little adventure. My house is around 3,400 square feet, and I placed each of the routers in my kitchen and ran several speed tests from five different locations around the house. I used my own internal speed test servers to ensure that I was able to get up to 10 gigabits per second bandwidth from each of the units, and I compiled hundreds of test results into a few different charts to determine the winners. So in this video, I'm gonna give you a brief overview of each of the routers, then I'll go over the performance results, and then I'll announce the winners for each category. All right, so with all that out of the way, let's get started. So these are gonna be in no particular order, and the first router in our lineup is the one with the longest name, which is the Asus ROG Rapid. Rapture GT BE98 Pro. The BE98 is a quad band Wi-Fi 7 router with a retail price of a whopping $700. And when it comes to design, the BE98 Pro is definitely not made to be subtle with its huge antennas, cool gaming graphics, and bright ROG LED logo on top. On the back, you'll find plenty of ethernet ports, including two 10 gigabit ports, four 2.5 gig ports, and a basic gigabit port. You also get two USB ports and a power switch. Now, I'm not gonna go really deep into the setup of these routers as all of them have an app that makes setup really easy, but one thing I wanna mention that I love about Asus aside from their app is that they provide a nice back-end web interface that allows you to get to a bunch of its advanced settings. And as I mentioned earlier, I'll talk about the performance of all these routers later in the video. Next up on the list is the TP-Link Archer BE900. And with the retail price of 700 bucks, the Archer BE900 is not to be mistaken for a basic router. This is a quad band Wi-Fi 7 router with a pretty unique design. On the front, you get a really cool dot matrix LED section, as well as a full color touchscreen display at the bottom. And the fun doesn't end there because you get a bunch of ports on this thing. It has a total of eight ports, which includes two 10 gigabit ports, an SFP plus port for those of us out there with a fiber optic connection. It also has four 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports, a single gigabit port, two USB ports, and a power switch. And setting this thing up was a breeze using TP-Link's Tether app. And I love that TP-Link gives you a lot of customization options, including the ability to separate the wireless bands out so you can have a dedicated band for 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, and 6 gigahertz separately. And with this router, you also get a nice back-end web interface, which you can access from a web browser. Next up is the Netgear Nighthawk RS700S. The RS700S is a tri-band router that retails for 600 bucks. Nighthawk routers have been known to have some of the most conspicuous and notable designs over the years, so it's kind of weird to see such a subtle design from them with this router. It's about 11 inches tall and has LED indicator lights on the front along with two hardware buttons, and of course, all of your ports are on the back. It comes with a total of six ports, including two 10 gigabit ports, four gigabit ethernet ports, a USB port, and a power switch. Now, I was actually tossed between choosing the Orbi 970 and the RS700S for this video, but after testing both, I concluded that the Nighthawk was the better option. Even though the Orbi has four 2.5 gig ports while the Nighthawk only has four gigabit ports, you get more advanced options from the Nighthawk and I actually got slightly better performance with the Nighthawk compared to the Orbi. And setting up the Nighthawk was a breeze just like it was with the rest of the systems and I had no issues navigating through the interface. This is another place where Orbi falls short since it's missing a few advanced options compared to the Nighthawk. Next on the list is the Eero Max 7. The Max 7 is a tri-band Wi-Fi 7 router and it's the most feature packed we've ever seen from Eero. Like all Eero routers, the Max 7 is marketed as a mesh router and it's available in a one pack, two pack, or three pack. And what I have with me today is the one pack which retails for 600 bucks. Eero is known for their simplicity when it comes to design and the Max 7 is no exception considering it looks more like a piece of art more than a router. Of course, all the ports are on the back and it has a total of four of them, you get two 10 gig ports and two 
2.5 gig ports and any of them can be used as your WAN connection. And one thing that makes the Max 7 stand out from the crowd is that it actually works not only as a router, but with Thread, Matter, and Zigbee support built into the unit, it's also a smart home hub, which is really cool. And when it comes to setup, as always, Eero has the fastest and easiest setup process of all the routers I've used. Now, with that being said, tech savvy users such as myself might actually prefer to see a bit more customization options as Eero has been known for being pretty limited when it comes to advanced configuration. And last but not least is another router that can be purchased as a mesh system, and that's the Linksys Velop Pro 7. The Pro 7 is a tri-band router which can be purchased as a one, two, or three pack, with the one pack having a more palatable retail price of $349, which is basically half the price of the other routers. The first thing you might notice about the Pro 7 is that it happens to be the smallest router on the list and might have the most unassuming design, giving it the highest wife approval factor. You get a total of five ports on the back, and unlike the other routers in this video, the WAN port is limited to only 2.5 gig instead of 10 gig, so that means you'll never see wireless speeds higher than 2.5 gigabits per second. And the LAN ports are gigabit only, so you won't be able to get more than one gigabit per second from your wired devices, which is kinda weird for a Wi-Fi 7 router, which I suppose can be explained by the price. But setting up the Velop was a breeze. It did take quite a while for the router to go through its configuration process in the app, but it was easy nonetheless. Now there aren't as many advanced customization options as there are on the other routers in this video, but the settings that most people are looking for are there. So now that we've talked all about the contenders, I wanna go over the results. So I had the results broken up into three different categories with one for each wireless band, and I have a separate chart for each of the five testing locations. All right, so first I wanna start with the six gigahertz test from 10 feet away. Now keep in mind that most wireless devices don't have six gigahertz, so you shouldn't expect to see these speeds on most devices in your home, but when it comes to six gigahertz, I have to say all of these units did a fantastic job. As expected, the Linksys Velop was the slowest since it only has a 2.5 gig WAN port, but it still performed really well. The rest of the routers were all pretty close with the Asus BE98 producing some of the fastest speeds I've ever seen over Wi-Fi. And when moving further away to 35 feet, the speeds drop as expected, but they're still really fast with most of them still providing well over two gigs up and down. When putting some walls between the units, we see the speeds drop a little bit more, but we're still getting great performance with the Eero still providing nearly three gigabits per second download speeds. And then here we have the first challenging spot, which is the basement, which is one floor down from the router and about 40 feet away. And the download speeds from most of these systems is still excellent, even though we start to see the upload speeds drop a good bit. But this is still really impressive for six gigahertz, which is supposed to have a pretty short distance. And for the ultimate torture test out in my driveway, we can see the speeds drop even more. Now it's important to note that a lot of wireless routers don't provide a signal out here at all. So to see six gigahertz penetrate the walls of my house and make it all the way out here is pretty impressive. And unfortunately, as you can see, the Eero couldn't produce a usable six gigahertz signal in the driveway. So that should be noted. All right, so moving on to five gigahertz, which is the most common wireless standard in most wireless devices nowadays. And from 10 feet away, we're seeing some really fast speeds. I did notice lower speeds from the Aero on five gigahertz, which I found really odd. And I tried multiple devices and got similar results. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but the rest of the systems are absolutely smoking. Moving further across the room to 35 feet and the speeds are still great and really stable. And adding some walls in between the units when using five gigahertz drops the speed slightly, but the connection was still really stable from all the units, even though the arrow was beginning to drop to nearly unusable speeds. And moving to our first challenging area in the basement, and I was really impressed with the performance from most of the routers. And with the five gigahertz torture test out in the driveway, I was really impressed to see that all of them produced a usable signal with some being better than others. And lastly are the 2.4 gigahertz test results. 2.4 gigahertz is an older standard that's mostly used on old wireless devices or IoT devices that don't require really fast speeds and from 10 feet away all the routers did a great job when moving across the room to 35 feet the speeds are still great with no big changes moving two rooms away drops the speeds a bit more but i was really impressed to see such great speeds from both the asus be 98 and tp link be 900 and with 2.4 gigahertz down in the basement the asus is still ripping with over 100 megs per second with the tp link struggling to give me anything at all at this distance and moving outside i saw some pretty terrible 2.4 gigahertz performance I gotta say that with 2.4 gigahertz being known for having the best Wi-Fi penetration and distance, I was kind of surprised to see these results. 
All right, so now that you've seen all the results, I wanna announce the winners, and I've broken it down into three different categories. So we have best overall, runner-up, and best value. And the winner for the overall best high-end Wi-Fi is the Asus ROG Rapture GTBE98 Pro. The Asus produced some of the fastest and most consistent results in nearly every test and offers the most flexibility and customization options. The only real downside to it is its design if you're not looking for something super bold, but if you're looking for insane performance, performance, the GTBE98 Pro is hard to beat. And the runner up for best high-end Wi-Fi goes to the TP-Link Archer BE900. It was nearly a tie with the Asus, but the Asus has an advantage. So even though both of these routers are quad band, the Asus has two six gigahertz channels, while the TP-Link has two five gigahertz channels. But with the slight advantage aside, the TP-Link Archer BE900 produced great results in most of the tests and has a great design and cool features. It's also the only router in this test that has an SFP Plus port if you wanna use a fiber connection. So if you're looking for something that performs great and you can put in your living room without upsetting your spouse, the Archer BE900 might be the one. All right guys, so those are the winners for the three categories. And if you're interested in buying any of the routers I mentioned in this video, I will put Amazon affiliate links in the video description. Clicking on those links helps the channel without costing you a dime. So I appreciate it if you would use them. But hopefully you guys found this video helpful. If you did, go ahead and make sure you mash that like button for me. And again, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any new videos. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video.